Times like these, you need a word from God. The bishop will be speaking in Psalms 91. Enjoy. God bless. We certainly want to give honor to God and his son Jesus and to the very power of the Holy Spirit. We are thankful for another opportunity to share this word of God. And we are thankful. Uh, we, we certainly always like to acknowledge our leadership. We thank God for the leadership, particularly during this time period of change that we're going through. It's just been a blessing to have such great leadership here at the Church of the Living God. We're so thankful to uh, Elder Billy Dowdy and his family and uh, Vandis Gwen Rogers and her family. Uh, we're thankful, thankful for my mom and dad. We're keeping them in safe. Amen. But they're doing well. They're praying for us this morning. Amen. And we thank God for all your leaders, all of your leaders um, uh, that are still praying and standing with us today. I thank God for the production team. Amen. It's been a blessing to provide these messages to you. And so we thank God for our president of the media, Brother Duvall Henry. And we thank God for Brother Charles Booker. Amen. For putting together our messages. So we're just thankful today. God has been good. Uh, we should not be worried about anything. We are children of the, of the king. You know, God has prepared us for this moment. This is our time period to help the world. The world is in challenges. I'm, I'm, uh, uh, I'm not uh, looking at this as if this is just a hoax. This is not uh, significant. This is significant. Amen. But we're not worried. You know, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. And I'm expecting that the members of the Church of the Living God, I'm expecting us to be an example uh, of, of what the world needs. I, I'm expecting us to trust God. Our trust is in God. The Holy Spirit was speaking to me and um, uh, gave a message, gave me a topic this morning. And that topic is times like these. That's what the Holy Spirit was on me. Times like these. And I had to, I had to listen. And certainly we, we're in a time, we're in a different time period right, right now. Uh, together, and now we appreciate also when God puts all of our gifts together, when we all together on Sunday and fellowship and the power of God is in the house. It's there. But what God has shown us, while you're not here, we are still powerful. We still touching and agreeing and God is still ministering, helping you. And we concern. We concerned this morning because some may be in limbo, possibility of losing a job. But God is there. I want to let you know, I want to encourage you today, today that God is still available and he will get you through this, this time period. He'll get us through. So yes, yes, yes. This is, this, is, this, is a, this is a time like no other. We've not seen a time like this. But you know what the Holy Spirit told me? Fix your eyes on God. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Put your eyes on him. He's going to get you through, you know. You know, don't, don't let the circumstances keep you from understanding that God is who you put your trust in. The subject, uh, the subtopic topic this morning, is there a word from the Lord? Is there a word from the Lord? In this time period, is there a word from the Lord? And I say, yes, there's a word from the Lord. Amen. There is a word from the Lord. And that word is very simple, and the Bible is very clear, you know, that there's a word, 2 Chronicles seven fourteen said, If my people, who are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray and seek thy face, then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and heal their land. We are the ones that need to be available to help in, in this change. I want to just tell you where our scripture lesson, let me give you the scripture lesson that we'll be coming through this morning. Amen. Uh, the scripture lesson is not Psalms 91, 1 through 7. And it reads, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the mighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. That's where we are today. Our trust is in him. God is able to get us through. And he says, he shall cover thee with, 
his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. That's, that's what we got to understand. There's truth here that we're dealing with. There's truth here. We're not in doubt. The Bible is clear. A double-minded man is unstable in his all his way. In this challenging time, I should not be all messed up when I go in Costco's. I should not, I should not be messed up when I go in the Ralph's. I should not be mad. When you see a disturbance in Ralph, a, a member just reported to me early this morning, said, oh gosh, there was about to be a shooting. Yeah, yeah. That don't make sense. So if we in there, if we in the store, just your presence should be able to bring peace. Just your presence. When you see, when I, when I walked in and I saw, I saw Walmart, I said, I'm, a, I'm just going in, you know, I just, I was going to just get a little juice. That's all. I was, I was going to get a little juice. I had my little daughter with me and I said, you know, we're just going to slip in there, get a little juice, you know, and a little milk. You know, I said, we'll get a little milk, a little whole milk. Cause, you know, I don't like the other milk. We get a little whole milk. And when I got to the door, they, I said, well, we're going to slip in. He said, I hope you, they, they told me right when I walked in. Yeah, I hope you can get in. I said, oh, man, this is going to be a big trouble, trouble on that. And when I got in, there was a line that was, and, and, I, and so I tried to figure out what was that line, but it, that line looked like it was for water and that type of thing, you know, but, and, and the milk was gone. But, you know, I didn't get worked up on it. I said, that's all right. Another day I'll come back, get some milk, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not, God will, God will supply my needs. He'll supply our needs. We have to remember that God will take care of us if we let him. And listen, the word of God said, thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. You know what? You know what we're saying, Church of Living God. You know what I'm telling you. You know what we're saying to the world. We're saying we want to send this pandemic back to the pit. That's what we're saying. Our prayer is, Lord, we want to take it down. We want to. We want to tell it to go back where it came from. We're able to do it. We have the power. You know, greater is He that's in you than He that's in the world. So why are I worried about it? Now, 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 we're following all of the laws, you know. We, you know, we social distancing, that's a new word, you know, and all that. We're doing all of that. But you know, when I'm walking, I'm walking in, I'm walking in the power of God. I'm saying, Lord, cover me with your precious blood right now, Lord. Go. And then you need to say, you need to say, because we're teaching you that we're not living in the third dimension. We're living in the fourth dimension. We live in that spiritual realm. So what we're really saying is when I'm walking around and, 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 my, and my wife, you know, and she's, she said, you little hot, you know, or you feel a little hot. I'm, just, shoot, I'm saying if, if I'm feeling a little hot, then Lord, bring it down right now. If I even, you know, I feel like, you know, I could have had a little symptom. If you feel like you fight, ask God heal it. That's what, that's what we're saying right now. So I, I be, I'm walking around saying, don't let me catch the, the virus, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And then bless others. You know, that's, that's, what, that's what we're walking around because the power is in us now. God, is, God, God put it in us to take care. Who his own self bear our sins in the body on the tree that ye being dead to sin shall not live unto righteousness. By his stripes you're healed. So we can claim that as a child of God, we can claim that. And for the world, we are representation to help them get through it. You're looking for an opportunity. In the story, you just forget about all the water you need. You'll be all right. We'll find a way to get you some water. But if you see somebody else, they're all messed up, you know, and, and said they got my last water. You, you got a lot of water at home. You, you can say, you know what, I th it take me five, ten minutes. I, you know, I'm going to go get you some water. That's what we're doing. That's what, we, that's what we're supposed to do, coming in together. And the world is not saved. So if the world is not saved, there's no way in the world that they can be helped. We have to help them. We've been chosen to do the work. We've been chosen to set an example, and God has prepared us for this moment to help. And the fact that we love people, because God loves us. You know, and if he loves us, we love, you know, we love others. 
So don't panic. Don't, 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 don't get all worked up on it. Be careful. We, we all have been calling different things. You know, I'm on, a, I'm on the board of directors with the credit union. We got to make all, we making all kind of changes on those type of things. We doing that to church, we making changes on it, you know. But you know what? Spiritually, I see you, you know. I can still see you. you know, some of you sitting here, some of you sitting there, you know. Just don't get too comfortable there, you know. You, some of you probably falling asleep and all that stuff. Wake up there. We need your help. Amen. We need your help. God, need, God needs you. You God's hands, his legs, his mouth, you hit. God will do it for you. And I'm, I'm just, I'm delighted. The word just, the word just take care of you. Nor for the pestilence that walk in darkness, nor for the destruction that waste in noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at the right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. How do we claim that? When we claim that, but it shall not come nigh thee. Huh? When he feel, feel like it's coming on, it ain't going to come my way. Be strong, you know, be strong, take it. You say, oh yeah, I ain't, take, I ain't taking that. Get up in the morning, you're praying and fasting. You know, call that thing to be not as if it were. I am not claiming that virus. We want to whip that virus. That's what we want. God has given us that ability to do that, to pray. Amen. And, 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 and let him work. It's not our, it's not our fight, it's God's fight. You know. And, you know, and, 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 and the word, and when, Tim, when Paul was talking to Timothy, look what he said to him. He said, Tim, fight the good fight of faith. And then, it, but he went beyond that. He said, lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many. See, see, see this is the time where people ought to be able to see you and see your works. You say, well, I know, I, you know, I know, I know. People need prayer now. Yeah, they need prayer. They should, they, they should be able to say, hey, you know what? I need to give, give a call. I need prayer, you know, because I don't know, you know, I don't, uh, if this thing go any longer, I don't know what impact it's going to have on my family, you know, you know. And then, and then we have to help, you know, we have to help some because in this time, you know, of social distancing, you know, we, you know, it, it can cause some trouble, you know, now. Because, you know, some people, you know, they're, they're just excuse. They're upset with one another at home, husband and wife. And somebody, somebody else say, oh, don't get too close, you know. Social distancing, you know. Be careful, you know. We, you, we use all, it'll be all kind of stuff we use in this stuff. Uh, we can't, we can't, you know. So, so, yes, be careful now. Don't make no excuses, you know. You can't sit in this side. You know, I was on this side. You, you know, we need some distance. No, no, we got to work together. There should be love in the house. Now it's a blessed time now because everybody, you at home more. You're seeing each other now, you know. You're encouraging one another, and you should be saying, hey, let's look at this word. Let's see what this word is going to do for us. This word is going to help you during this time period, you know. And then, and, and then I know it's a lot. I know the Holy Spirit was talking to me. I, I know a lot. You're saying, oh, you know what? I was going to go and have my physical, you know, I've been kind of slack, you know, you know, I don't, I don't know, do I have all my medicine? So you're going to get, you, you're getting all, you're getting all worked up because, you know, you didn't do what you were supposed to do, you know, when the time, when you had more time. Now you're worried. God don't like worrying, worrying to stress you out, bring things out. We, we, you, you, you should have took care of certain them things right then. You, 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 know, you know what you were supposed to do to stay healthy, we had to talk about, we had to talk all, we still had to talk about getting yourself healthy, doing right, you know. Putting yourself, oh, no, you know, oh, I know myself. I was thinking about that and the Holy Spirit tell me, I said, you know, uh, you know, uh, people, you know, they had planned, they got their plans ready and it was just right. They said, you know what, I just joined a, a, a you know, a, a fitness, uh, you know, health uh, place. I was going to get myself in gear, now I can't go. I had it all planned in my mind, got myself all worked up to do it, you know, and now we can't, we can't do it, you know. So now we, now we stuck. No, no, first of all, you should have been doing that a long time ago. But, you, but it's no, you can do it now because you still can, you can still get outside. You still, you, you know, you, you got social distancing, you do your walk, you do your walk around, even around your house. Outside in your yard, that's what, that's what you can do, take yourself care, take care of yourself, and then knock off that eating and stuff, you know. Don't, don't, you know, you know what you were supposed to do. You know how you got there. 
you had one piece of cake, and then you said, I should stop, and then you went to a second piece, and, and the next thing you know, you had a third piece. And then you said, oh, I shouldn't have. You knew, you knew, you knew before. Because we're going to get in a lot of situations where we made some mistakes, you know, during this time period, even financially, and you're going to be all worried about that. And then you're going to say, well, God, you know, I, I you know, I, I didn't know. And then I want you to know the Holy Spirit is going to talk to you straight, just like he talked to me, and says, yep, you did know. I even told you and warned you. And so what you do is you say, Lord, forgive me. Help me during this time I made the mistake. Don't try to, you know, don't try to negotiate with God. The Holy Spirit already know you made the mistake, and let's get on with it. You're not the only one that made a mistake. Moses made mistakes. Abraham made mistakes. We all made mistakes. But God wants you to be clear in your mind because this is a time where you need to be prepared to help others. And if you help others, God, the blessing come back to you. What you sow, you reap, right? He that soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. He that soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. So, so, so what you give out don't come back. You, know. you can spare some soap. You, know. yeah, you, don't, you don't have to have all of the sanitizer. You, know. you don't have to have it all. Help some people. Ask some questions. Look around and see where, where you can be a help at. Because God wants you to be a support during this time period. He don't want you to feel like, you know, I got to close, I'm going inside, and I'm not coming out. You know, you know don't come, don't go out. Then you get, then you, then you, then you're getting too paranoid. You know, then you say, oh yeah, no. I went out to the mailbox. I had gloves. That's good. You've done your part, but don't lose yourself going back in. You know, and don't, if you trembling and fearful about everything, you can't help nobody else. God don't want us. He, he told us he didn't want that. God not, uh, has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. So in a, in a circumstance where the Bible makes it clear, there will be trials and tribulations. There are going to be some issues. We're all going through some things. We all go through some things. That's going to be a reality. We prepared for that, you know. And so this is one of them. And so we prepare in prayer, in prayer. That's where it should be. Your, 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 your schedule should increase in prayer. You should be doing more reading and more prayer. And the Holy Spirit should be talking to you more. You should be hearing God talk to you more. Not your flesh talking. Oh, my. Oh, what are we going to do? What do you think we're going to do? No, you're going you're gonna to read your word. You're going to listen to the Holy Spirit speak to you. And then you're going to be a benefit to the kingdom. That's what, you want to, that's what you want to be. If I'm sick, if I had the flu and I'm lying down, I can't help nobody. So when I'm well, we're helping. And we're praying for those to stay well and be strong and be ready for anything. Things come, be ready. Things going well, be ready, be ready, just be ready. And God will take you through it. In the Bible, in 1 Kings 17 and 1, I, I was looking at Elijah. I took a look at Elijah there, and I, and I, and I, was, I, was, I was looking at the scripture, and, and it said, And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord of God Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. Things had been going well for Ahab and Jezebel. That, just like we, things were going well, you know, nothing like that. And then, and then Elijah, the man of God, God always calls his people to make the necessary changes to get us back in line to be where we are, you know. You know. I didn't say God caused a pandemic, you know, because God has given us free will and free choice and we make the decisions and choices of the things that we make, you know, we have this consequences on it, you know. So God is not saying, oh, I'm gonna send a pandemic. That's, that's the wrong theology. But Elijah was given Ahab who was a little bit weak, Jezebel was a lot stronger, he said, hey, I'm telling you right now. 
Israel began to worship folk gods of Balaam. They began to worship. And that disrespected God. And so God, God said, hey, you think your gods is fertile gods and they're taking care of everything? He said, I'm shutting off the water supply. I'm shutting it off for three years and six months. Wow. Boy, that, that, guess what? Here's, a, here, here's why the Holy Spirit told me about that. Because Elijah was a prophet, man of God. We're people of God, you know. But when something happens in our world, it affects Christians and non-Christians. The only thing is, for change to take place, we Christians have to be in position and ready to be used by God to turn things around. And Elijah, God gave him a word. He says, it's going to be a famine. That's what he's really going to tell me. It's going to be a famine. It's going to be three years and six months. Now, Elijah, you know, for that moment, you know, he could, you know, you, you can get a little weak. He goes, whoa, you know, that's going to knock us down. I mean, whoa, three, three years, six. First thing you think about, you know, as you know, when the flesh hits you, Spiritual, your spiritual man gets you, get you back clear. But the first thing you think about is, is, oh, oh, wow. That means I can't eat. Yeah, I can't, you know, I can't drink. That's, that's, that's the first thing you would think on it. But Elijah helped for a moment, and God said, so I'm going to have to send you out to the brook, the sheriff. I'm going to have to send you out. Because, and hide you, because Ahab and Jezebel are going to be very, very mad. Now you done prof gave a prophetic word that for three, three years and six months, there's not going to be no food. There's not going to be no water. No dew even. Nothing. But God took his prophet, the man of God, and said, you go here. It's like, that's, how, that's, how, that's how God does us. He, he protects us. He said, you're going over there, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take care of you. Yeah, I'm going to bring you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you by the brook, so I'm going to give you water. The water's there, so you, you got it made. And then I'm going to feed you, though. Yeah. Well, how you going to feed me? I ain't, you know, because I didn't read anything how good, you know, Elijah can cook or nothing, but... He said, how you going to feed me? So I'm going I'm I'm to feed you with some ravens. He, he didn't say one either because there's a plural on it. It said ravens. I mean, you know. <laughs> I mean, I remember the Holy Spirit told me. And I, I looked at that and I said, well, God. I said, if, you know, if you tell me, because we, you know, you know, you know, we a little funny about, you know, the food, you know. And so God is so powerful that he said he'll take a raven. And I just, you know, I, I, just, I just saw that, that raven with that little beak, you know. And, 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 and he gonna, the raven going to feed me that? Wow, that, boy, that's, uh, that didn't make sense, you know, to it. But, but, but you know what? It's beyond our senses, you know. Our senses will let us down. But I trust in God, it will not. And so Elijah, he trusted God. He trusted God to take care. He said, that's okay, I don't care, I don't care how it's going to happen. What I do know is that God will take care of me in all circumstances. There's a famine, there's a problem, there's a pandemic that's going on. But what I do know, that God will take care of me. He'll get me through it. No matter what it is, God will get me through it. The Bible said, in all things, work together for the good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. So if we're operating in God's purpose, God's going to take care of us. If my mind is stayed on him, if I'm not moved by what I see, but by what I believe, I'm going to be all right. I'm going, I'm, I'm, going, I'm going to be fine if, I just, if all my trust is in God. 
If I put my trust in the Lord, he, he will get me through. He's not failed. And, and then he told, he, he told Joshua, a lot's going on, a lot of change is taking place. I'm getting you ready. He's getting us ready. He's getting us ready to step up a little bit. He's getting us ready to wake up. He's getting us ready to cut in on, on our sleep. Some of you are getting 10 hours of sleep and some getting 2 and 3 hours of sleep. You need to cut in on that 10 hours. You need, you need to cut in on that 10 hours. We need those hours so that you can be a blessing to the kingdom. I wonder sometimes, you know, people getting all that sleep and then they, and then they hear some people say, I'm, yeah, I was up too late. I just wonder, do the, do the, do the spirit tell them and say, you sleeping too much, you know? You know, I just, I just wanted to sometimes say, hey, you, you didn't do enough. Don't sometimes, you know, sometimes, you know, you wake up and you have a full 24 hours and the Holy Spirit will tell you, you know, you didn't do too much today. You know, you know that's what, because the Holy Spirit, God wants you to be in the areas that he wants you to be in. And sometimes you got to evaluate you. You don't just go, just don't go from day to day. You need, to, you need to examine each day and see, was I valuable? Particularly now. Particularly now, what did I, you know, what did I, you know, what, what, how was I a benefit? I did my part, you know. But when the opportunity come, was I available for God? You know, does, does, was I available to God to say, hey, God loves you? You say, oh, yeah, you know, I can't, you know, I'm pumping gas. I can't, can't get too close. You can say, hey, God loves you. Say, hey, God loves you. I love you. We're praying for each other. We're going to get through it. You know, you can see it. You can discern it on the, on the face. God give you favor. God give you discernment. You look over there, somebody really, you know, challenge. Say, hey, God's got you. I'm praying with you. That's what, that's what we need to be doing during this time period. And God, God will take care of you. And then you do what you're going to do, you know. We learn each day different things. Yeah, I'm grabbing. Yeah, you're right. I'm grabbing the, you know, I'm, I'm grabbing the gas Handle, man, I'm grabbing that, I'm handling that thing like an instrument now. Real easy with it. Putting it in easier, all kind of changes, you know. We make the adjustment, we make the change, you know. We do, we clean the hands and we do what we have to do. But we trust God. Because God will get us through it. And God will take care of us. We walk by faith, not by sight. God got us. I'm thankful that I'm a child of the king. I'm thankful that I know the Lord. I'm thankful that I know the Lord in good times and bad times. I thank the Lord for his grace and his goodness because he certainly has been good to us. Let our faith stand and grow through this period. We not only have the power to stand, but we have a word of hope to dispense to help others during this pandemic. Brothers and sisters, our true foundation cannot be shaken because we stand in on a solid rock. Praise the Lord. I can easily say and feel confident I said the church of the living God. We built on the foundation and that foundation is Christ. The scripture says in Hebrews 12, 28, Wherefore we receive in a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Whew. So I'm thanking the Lord today that there is a word from the Lord. And he said, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven. He will forgive my sins and heal thy land. Don't be fearful, brothers and sisters. God's got this. God has got this. And you're the instrument that's going to help to bring the change. God my brothers and sisters, don't be fearful. You know, God has got you. And God has had some protection for you. In the book of Ephesians, Ephesians 6 and 10, says, Finally, my brethren, 
Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. To my brothers and sisters, and to all that are watching, you may have been pricked in your heart now. And if you're not saved, I want to make sure that you have an opportunity. The Holy Spirit is pricking you now. And for you to be saved, the scripture is clear. Romans 10 and 9 said that, if thou shalt confess with the mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in the heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. If you believe that, you're saved. Now what you want to do after that, you need to find a local church where you can grow in your faith. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all in Jesus' name. Can we all say You've just been listening to a message from the Church of the Living God. If you enjoyed this message, feel free to listen to more found in the description below. God bless. See you soon.